What's going on everybody? Today's video we're going to cover wheel rates and spring rates. So I'm in the middle of doing the IRS swap in my car and in order to make the car feel similar to what it did as far as spring rates I need to do a little math to figure out the wheel rate and spring rate with what I used to run and with the leverage ratios of now putting the IRS in the car. So this video goes along with our S550 subframe swap stuff but it's kind of also a standalone video if you're interested in these topics and kind of want to learn how to do it on your own car. Now the books that I referenced doing all the math we're about to go over in no particular order. Competition Car Suspension by Alan Stamforth. Uh, this one's really good. Uh, a little bit more formula car type stuff in this, but goes over a lot of suspension des designs and geometry and everything. Um, so this one's really good. Advanced Race Car and Chassis Technology by Bob Bowles. This one's a good all-around book as well. You can see you got some sports cars, some circle track stuff and everything. Um, again, this one covers a whole bunch of stuff. And then last but not least, Chassis Engineering by Herb Adams. A lot of math and stuff in this one. A lot of solid axle stuff in this one as well, which having a Mustang, this one was really cool. Um, but again, believe it or not, stuff you'll find on the internet, uh, I found some discrepancies. So that's kind of why I just consulted all three of these to kind of, you know, make sure I'm kind of on the right track with everything. I'll put a link to all three of these books in the video description below if you want to pick any of them up. Alright, so my old setup, the solid axle, essentially solid axles have a one-to-one -one ratio because if you go over a two-wheel bump, both wheels go up, both springs compress, that's it. Even a one-wheel bump, there is a leverage ratio off of this tire, but the leverage ratio gets canceled out by the fact that both springs are acting on that motion. So my old setup had 450 pound springs on it. So we want to figure out the new IRS. What spring rate in that will give us right around 450 pounds of wheel rate. All right, so here we have a drawing of an IRS suspension. So here's the inner pivot, here's your outer ball joint and where the spring attaches. So the equation for the motion ratio is D1 divided by D2. So pretty simple. In my case, it is 12 and a half. Uh, let's do it up here, 12.5 divided by 16.5. So my motion ratio is 0.7575 repeating, so we'll say 0.758. So, pretty simple. The motion ratio on my car is about 0.75 of that. Now, in order to figure out the wheel rate, what we're going to do is use the spring rates that were on the solid axle just to run our numbers. Then we can kind of reorganize the equation to figure out the wheel rate and what springs we need on the IRS to get the wheel rate that we want. So the equation for that is the wheel rate equals your motion ratio squared times K, which is your, your spring rate, times your angle correction factor. Now the angle correction factor, I mentioned it in other videos, anytime a shock and a spring is leaned in, you lose a little bit of effectiveness, effectiveness of that. Now in order for me to get my angle correction factor, it was fairly easy. All I did was measure where the shocks mount at the top of the car and where they mount on the control arm. So in my case, the top points were 41 and a half, and the lower mount all the way to the other side was 46 and a half. So take the difference, five inches, 
divided by 2 because we're only going to deal with half. So we know we're out 2.5 inches here to where it mounts here. Now what we can do, it's a right triangle. So this measurement here is the inverse tangent. You can just download an app on your phone. That's what I do. And the shock compressed running all these numbers gives me 9.5 degrees leaned in. So my angle correction factor is 9.5 degrees. All right, so you can see it real time. We're in that trigonometry app I just mentioned. The shock, when it's compressed at ride height, is about 15 inches from the lower mount to the top mount. And then, like we mentioned, it's out about 2.5 inches. Calculate. There you go. There's our 9.59 degrees. So now I know that I'm in 9.5 degrees. So the angle correction factor equation is your, so your angle correction factor equals the cosine of your degrees squared. So in my case, the angle correction factor is 0.9728, that's enough, uh, enough decimal places. So, I probably should have did this over. So now we can start plugging everything into this equation here. So if we want a wheel rate of 450, the motion ratio squared, which up, here's our motion ratio. So it's 0.758 squared times K, we'll leave that alone, times point nine seven two eight so basic high school algebra you do your exponents first so 450 equals point five seven four times spring rate times point nine seven two eight so just continuing the equation 450 equals point five five eight three which is this number times this number uh, times K now you just divide the 450 by this comes over 0.5583 and then you're left with this equation equals 806 equals K so I'm I'm going to want right around an 800 pound spring rate on the IRS setup to give me a similar wheel rate to the solid axle. This equation here comes right out of page 44 of the race car chassis technology book. So again, really helpful stuff in all these books. I'll put links to all three of them in the video description below. Also keep in mind you can just rework this equation with a given spring rate and then just solve for wheel rate as well in case you want to work it backwards. So now to check it we know we want about an 806 so if we do our math let's kind of scrub this so wheel rate equals do this real time that point 574 times 806 about 462.6 times 0.9728 equals look at that 450.06 so you know you can always double check your math that way as well all right guys so there you have it Wheel rates based off of spring rates for solid axles and IRS suspensions. Keep in mind, doing my IRS swap, this gets me close. I still need to figure out, you know, roll centers, sway bars. There's a couple other factors I need to kind of consider. But the 806 
uh, or 800 pound springs, if I throw them in, I know the car will be in the ballpark. So, as always guys, hope you learned something. Please give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. As always, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next one.